to see the turnout this week, to see all of you here really making this evening what it is. I'd like to recognize the dignitaries, officials, and community leaders who have joined us this evening. And I'm really very honored to be here to speak about this topic and this issue, which is really very close to my heart. I'd like to thank our hosts, Rabbi Sessler and the Sephardic Temple. For the synagogue's wonderful leadership, working so closely with the consulate, and thank you for your inspiring words. I'd like to also recognize my colleagues from the consulate, uh, Consul for Political Affairs, Yaki Lopez, Consul for Public Diplomacy, Maya Kadosh, Consul for Administration, Daya Mizrahi, and many other members of the consulate. I'd like to specifically recognize Michelle Moret, for all the hard work that she put into tonight. Where's Michelle? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you to David Suisa. I really look forward to hearing what you have to say. <laughs> you know, a great Jewish sage once wrote that the truth can hurt like a thorn at first, but in the end it blossoms like a rose. These words really come to mind this evening. And this insight could really be beneficial to the world with respect to tonight's topic. Because the truth of this particular story remains largely untold and not heard enough. As the rabbi mentioned, on November 30th, Israel and the Jewish world remembers the fate of more than 850,000 Jews who were forced out of Arab countries and Iran during the 20th century. This day commemorates the tragedy of the people who were given no choice but to flee from their homes and to leave the countries where they had lived for a millennia for the sole reason that they were Jewish. Many were deprived of their belongings and suffered violence and persecution. The story of the expulsion or forced exodus of the entire Jewish communities from Arab countries and Iran is really a central part of modern Jewish history and memory. It is our story. It's the story of each and every one of us. This forgotten exodus, this deliberate casting out of the Jews, just because they were simply Jews, is something which befell our entire nation. And even those of us whose families were not affected by it, it should affect all of us. Yet this is a story that we have never told well, neither to ourselves, our own people, and not to the wider world. Our purpose in convening this evening tonight, among other things, is to help change that. I want to thank our community, the community partners and organizations who have joined together with the consulate to make this evening possible, the Sephardic Temple, Jemena, Sephardic Education Center, 30 Years After, and the Iranian American Jewish Federation. Thank you for your partnership. On June 23, 2014, the Knesset, Israel's parliament, designated November 30th every year as the National Day of Commemoration for this forgotten exodus. We have come together to add Los Angeles' name to the growing list of communities around the Jewish world who are embracing this story and are determined to tell the story and respect its relevance to our collective Jewish memory. I'd like to share just a few facts with you. For over 2,500 years, Jews in substantial numbers resided in areas that are today Arab countries and Iran. Upon the declaration of the future modern state of Israel in 1947 and 1948, the status and treatment of the Jews in those countries deteriorated and dramatically decreased as many Arab countries declared war against Israel or backed the war. The treatment of Jews by Arab leaders and Muslim populations varied from country to country. In some countries, Jews were forbidden to leave. In others, Jews were displaced en masse. And in some countries, Jews faced edicts of expulsion. In virtually all Arab countries in Iran, Jews and other minorities were denied of their human and civil rights and were stripped of their property and citizenship, leaving them with no means of livelihood. In some of those countries, Jews were often victims of murder, 
arbitrary arrest and detention, torture and expulsion. The Jewish population is now virtually non-existent in these countries. And we saw in the film about how many, in many of these countries, these Jewish communities existed for more than 2,500 years. Ladies and gentlemen, two refugee populations were created as a result of the war that waged against the independent state of Israel. When the issue of refugees is raised within the context of the Middle East, people invariably refer to Palestinian refugees, not to the Jews that were displaced from Arab countries in Iran. Neither the mass violations of human rights nor the displacement of Jews from Arab countries has ever been recognized and adequately or adequately been addressed by the international community. Now laws have been passed by the Knesset in Israel and here in the Congress in the United States that require that this issue be raised and addressed as part of any future Israeli-Palestinian negotiations or peace deal. <coughs> and that is a step in the right direction. It would, however, be an injustice if the international community were to recognize the rights of one victim population, the Palestinian refugees, without recognizing the rights of the, of the victims of the very same events, the Jewish refugees from Arab countries. This is a story that needs to be heard. It is a truth that must now be acknowledged. Regrettably, the United Nations also bears responsibility for this distorted narrative. Since 1948, there have been more than 150 UN resolutions that have specifically dealt with the Palestinian refugee plight. Yet not one of these, not one of these resolutions makes any reference to or is concerned with in any way the plight of the 850,000 Jews that were displaced from Arab countries and Iran. This is a story of rejection, a rejection of our people that's, that still today drives rampant anti-Semitism in the Arab world <coughs> and the ongoing hostility and violence perpetrated against our people and against our nation. <coughs> The refusal to see this and to address it, whether at the UN or any of the UN member states, only serves those who wish to perpetuate the conflict and not those who seek to resolve it. Of course, alongside the international politics, there still remains the simple but compelling human dimension, the individual stories of the displacement and suffering, much like the stories that we heard tonight. And by the way, it, it just so happens that I have had the privilege to personally get to know each and every one of the people that spoke in the film tonight. And to be able to hear firsthand, it really has an inspiring effect. Ultimately, the political dynamics turn on the power of these stories, how often and how well they are told. The more we tell these stories, the more impact we can have. And this is where you come in. Each and every person in this room tonight can play a role in telling and amplifying this part of the modern Jewish experience and memory. The time has come to rectify this historical injustice and to restore the plight and the truth of the forgotten exodus of the Jews from Arab countries and Iran. It's more important than ever that we learn the most basic lesson that we learn in the Haggadah and indeed all of Jewish history teaches us that we need to hear our own story. We need to know our own story. And we need to tell our own story. Because if we don't, who will? That's why we hope and intend that this event, this anniversary and commemoration will become a permanent part of the community calendar and that it will grow every year. As Professor Erwin Cutler, who was the former Justice Minister of Canada and an outspoken leader and human rights proponent, said about this very issue, let there be no mistake about it. Whether there, where there is no remembrance, there is no truth. Where there is no truth, there will be no justice. Where there is no justice, there will be no reconciliation. And where there is no reconciliation, there will be no peace. And peace, of course, is something that we all seek to achieve. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here.